So we just had this this riveting discussion 10 seconds ago about Alex's zapping situation. You, I like to start the podcast at high energy, so we're going to talk about static electricity. Uh, there's a lot of fucking static electricity in my fucking room. I, I got rid of my plastic fucking PC chair mat because it was fucking producing too much fucking static. I blame this dog for all the static in here. I blame the carp for all the static in here. I blame the winter because it's dry for all the static in here. I need to fucking get some way to fucking discharge all this shit. I actually looked it up and I all, all I know about it is getting a humidifier. But I, want, I don't want this room to be moist because there's a dog in it all the time. I don't want it to be all fucking grimy and smelly. So what do, uh, what do, you, what do you do? What do you do to stop yourself from fucking exploding? What do I do? Well, I, what I do, Alex, is I make a lot of noise. A lot of noise. Boys. You're not doing it, Alex. You gotta I, do the thing. I expected a real answer out of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I do have an answer. Okay. So, number one, don't use a humidifier. I did that in my old place, and the walls were like... So, okay. This may be a slightly different situation for you, but the last apartment I was in, some dude was, like, smoking cigars constantly, so whenever it got, whenever we turned on the humidifier, water would appear on the walls, and then it would fall down and leave these disgusting brown tar streaks all over the walls. Yeah, I don't want this place to be moist. I don't want that. Uh, I had a similar problem when at another different place I lived. God, I lived in a lot of shitholes. Now that I'm really thinking about it, dude, <laughs> I lived in a lot of sketch places. Uh, this one, I would plug my computer in, and if I touched the microphone, or if I touched the computer case, I would feel a dull zipping noise. Like, I would I would hear that, and I would feel like my fingers would get all tingly. <laughs> so the way I fixed that one was I just put it into a different outlet. Have you tried that? No, actually, I have not. It is very possible that it's just, like, not grounded properly. Eh, I'll give it a shot. Uh, the other option is you could get one of those little those little bracelets. Have you seen those? Like the super mega nerds wear them. Yeah, but then they connect to like this little like pad or something. Like, well, how the fuck do those work? Those ones, uh, we did that when uh, when I had to repair like the Bitcoin miners. Which, by the way, um, I just made sixty five dollars off PayPay coin. I'm kind of a crypto bro. <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna buy an island and name it Crypto Land? Well, I'm going to buy an island, all right, but you're not going to know what's going on there. <laughs> oh, speaking of violence. So which one of you fucking jokers, which, by the way, I did all that bullshit so that YouTube in the first 30 seconds, you can't say fuck. And there's no way I was going to say anything except you fuckers that signed the podcast email up six times for the Thailand Daily Newspaper. <laughs> I have gotten six Thailand Daily emails every single day about like expats from America attacking native Taiwanese people during sex. Where did you even find this? Well, Thailand is a is a country of sex tourism, so that's probably why that's the only thing in their fucking news. It's all they do over there. Just, they just fuck. <laughs> you know what? You got me there. I genuinely don't know anything about Thailand besides besides the whack shacks. Alex, did you have what did you have for? Uh, we're we're gonna try a um. We're going to try, like, slightly organizing ourselves better for this episode. It doesn't sound like it. It took us 10 <laughs> minutes to get to this point. Trust us, I promise Chad. you. What do you what What have you been up to, Alex? What you, what, you, what are you doing over there? Depends. What can I legally say? <laughs> you, you did get banned on Discord. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Okay. All right, chat. Let me explain. I was <laughs> chat restricted. I was chat restricted in Discord for 14 hours and 37 minutes. I have said a lot of things on Discord the past year and a half that I regret none of. I regret nothing. I regret literally nothing. If they get rid of me, I'm just going to make a new Discord account. It's a fucking Discord account. I've basically just been radicalizing further and further because now they have directly <laughs> inconvenienced me. Now they're not just like, now they're not just like these things over there that annoy me. Now they're in my own fucking walls. They're like the unknown in, in <laughs> Willie's chocolate experience. <laughs> What's that? It's the unknown. He lives in the walls. No. That sound is me when I found out that you sent me like a like a text message and that's how I knew something was wrong. I'm like, Alex never sends me a text message. 
I think you sent me a message and you just said, they got me. They <laughs> fucking got me. <laughs> I said that to two different people and it was you and Ryan, AKA Gutsu. And both of you are different politically. You who is a little more right leaning, but not as, not as passionate as me. And Gutsu, who is the most cringe leftoid ever. When I said the, the ch love for all peoples of gender. And he's got me. Oh God, they got me. You just started laughing. He's like, Hey, Hey, Alex, don't talk like that. That's really mean. I hate him so fucking much right now. You have no idea. Anyway, side note is, side note, to, to, to not get you banned off of fucking YouTube. Point is, is that I've been kind of going fucking bonkers. So in order to try to stop going so bonkers, I decided to actually, like, try watching things again. Because I haven't, like, watched anything in a very long time. Because, like, all I do is play Despite video. all of these things I'll send you that are like, hey, check this out. This will be really cool. And you'll be like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, Ted, yeah, yeah, why don't you watch this political podcast that's seven fucking hours long? I'm just saying, chat. I, I'm, I'm listening to this shit. <laughs> I fucking work. And Ted's just all like, eh, eh, eh. David Lynch movie, uh, obscure, <laughs> obscure 1937 black and white post African funk core film, <laughs> silent movie. I can't believe Alex isn't interested in this. What the fuck? His favorite movie isn't a black and white silent film about the theft of a bicycle in post World War II Italy. Yikes! <laughs> Fucking all Ted does is watch like. I'll sit over here and I'll watch literal slop. <laughs> I watch like Kino, Alex. That's what Ted, it's called. It's called Ted Kino. It's Ted good. Ted will watch. We'll watch the most obscure shit ever. He'll be like, oh, yes, the Bulgarian fucking 1952 <laughs> film about the dangers of communism featuring a famous Italian actor, Giovanni Giovanni. And he'll just <laughs> Alex, be like, it's like fucking <laughs> Tokyo Godfathers. That shit came out in the United States. <laughs> Ted, Ted is a lot like Joe where he just watched is random shit you've never fucking heard of. But for me, it's the slop. I love watching nothing but fucking slop. I've kind of turned into what I call uh, the schizo version of Movie Bob, where it's uh, <laughs> the, the end game of politics and Nintendo. I'm that, but in the other direction. <laughs> So give the audience a reminder. Movie Bob's the eugenicist, right? Movie Bob said a lot of things. He's a, he's a lot of things. He's a literal Nazi, parentheses leftoid, where he'll just say, we should just take all Republicans and just fucking kill them. Just behead them in the fucking streets. There is uh, no <laughs> oh, such I, thing yeah. as, uh, there's no bad targets, just bad tactics. Just I'm just saying, <laughs> Alex, I think you were right on the money there about Movie Bob. How interesting. <laughs> but like, they took away my toys. Thus, console wars are my Vietnam. The console wars were my Vietnam. I heard a whole book about Mario Brothers. The body Brothers type three. AB was my Vietnam. Literally me. <laughs> okay, anyway. What I wanted to get to this before I distracted myself with my own schizophrenia was um, I've been trying to actually watch actual shows again, both downloading Kino onto my fucking uh, big, fat, fucking two terabyte external, but also. I watched a show that I watched when I was a kid but never actually finished, which was Avatar The Last Airbender, which I also refer to as Avatar The Last Kino, because Ted, I don't think it gets much better than that. I think I've witnessed peak <laughs> fiction, Ted. <laughs> this Nickelodeon <laughs> children's animated series. Yes, it's good. It's really good, though. Like, like unironically, it is very good, and I see why it's as popular as it is. I, I do understand it. it. It is actually a very fun adventure. And it has some fillery bits, but, like, the choreography's good, the animation's pretty good, the acting's pretty good, Iroh is, uh, literally the greatest character, like, ever created. Like, it's, it is legitimately just a really, really, really good show. I, um, when we watch stuff, me and the boys, um, we will watch, like, say, just some random fucking garbage. We'll watch a few episodes of it, for, like, on our weekend, and then we'll, like, save it the rest for, like, later, right? So we'll watch, like, six or so episodes yeah. at a time. For Avatar, I was so into it, I just marathoned the entire goddamn thing for three fucking days straight. Yep, I remember you were staying home sick from work. You're like, oh my god, I'm so sick, but I need- the carts need me. They need me. I mean, they do. No one else can do the job apparently as good as me. This simple fucking task that only I give enough <laughs> of a shit to fucking do, apparently. But fucking, I- I watched- I did nothing. I did nothing but watch Avatar The Last Airbender for three fucking days. 72 straight fucking hours. I was posting the screenshots of me, like, watching it, like, showing just, like, random scenes that I liked. And some guy was like, Alex, it's been, like, 60 fucking hours. What the fuck have you been doing? I just said, Avatar. 
<laughs> it's pretty <laughs> funny too because the time that you were playing Avatar, I was playing Peak Fiction because I started Disco Elysium. I'm not gonna. I don't want to go into Disco Elysium on this because when Alex gets past the title screen puzzle because <laughs> his game keeps crashing, I like if he's anything like me, he'll be hooked within 15 seconds of starting the game because it'll be like, oh, shit, this is that kind of game. You're not an ultra liberal, you fucking retard. <laughs> I didn't know that that picture of that dude, that fucked up fat dude was real. I saw the <laughs> Wario image and I thought it was like someone just made that. I didn't know it was based on him. It's good. It's it's good content. I'm sure I'll like it. I have no idea. What, like, I have tried several things to get this to work. I've, I've installed several graphics drivers for the past few days and nothing has gotten this game to fucking work, dude. I'm going to just fucking refund it and then pirate it because that's what the devs want me to do. Yeah, when we do an episode on Disco, like, for those who know Disco, I went, I didn't know this, but I went full schizo cop. I didn't know that that's the path I was going down, but it was also literally me. Like, we'll talk about, like, the, the weird rights issue and all this crazy shit that went down that apparently just happened, like, maybe four months ago. It's a whole thing. We'll go more into it. If you're listening to this and you're like, oh, yeah, I heard about that game. I should get around to it. You should get around to it. I managed to go fucking five years without getting spoiled, and I'm very happy I did. The other game I've been playing, Alex, is, uh, you didn't believe me when I said this, but I've been playing Garfield Kart. Why did you buy fucking Garfield Kart? I don't remember how I got Garfield Kart. Okay. But Alex, playing Garfield Kart taps into, like, a secret hidden gamer rage I didn't even know I had. So <laughs> Garfield Kart, it just something feels wrong. You can you can feel how like how cheap it is. It feels like I'm playing with like McDonald's play toys. <laughs> <laughs> like everything you do just feels wrong. <laughs> the worst part about the game is the collision. If you touch anything, if you touch the fucking ground, Alex, there's a chance you will glitch through it and die. It gets sent back to eighth place. There's a fucking power up. This, this is the famous Garfield power up. You know the 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 pink perfume. <laughs> okay. You use that, and it gives you like super speed. But if you touch fucking anything, your guy gets stuck, and will it'll sit there for five seconds for the full length. And you have to slowly back up, correct yourself out of the path. Alex, if you are going too fast, your guy will jump too high and go out of bounds in the middle of the fucking track, and you can't <laughs> stop that. If you are playing too bad, the game fucks you over. If you're playing too fast, the game fucks you over. And if you're doing okay, there's a chance someone just hits you with a fucking, like, zooming pie, which, by the way, Garfield, famous item, the zooming pie in the landmines. This is slop of the highest order. So, like... Okay, okay. I was gonna say, to be fair, Garfield's been going on for like 50 fucking years. I, I I assume, theoretically speaking, a landmine has had to have been in Garfield at some point, right? <laughs> you know what? Probably. I bet they, uh, when they got the license, because it's from like some real shifty publisher. <laughs> Like, one that no one's ever heard of. Except they are making Ant War Simulator, a photorealistic RTS ant game that comes out this year. Okay. This game is so popular. Do you want to know how we found the correct lobby? We just hit play online, and we were the literal only people playing. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, Garfield Kart, something about it just pisses me the fuck off, dude. <laughs> I have never been that mad at a game, even League of Legends, which unfortunately I have been self-harming by playing League recently because I really wanted to play Fiddlesticks. I actually, I've shockingly, I've broken free from League of Legends after the Riot Vanguard thing. I'm like, you know what? I think not. I think I'm just going to not play anymore because my friends don't want to play anymore because of that. And so I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Fucking solo queue? I'm going to fucking just not play. I'll just play Heroes of New Earth by myself instead on the private server. For fucking Heroes of fucking New Earth. Which, by the way, actually has a decent amount of people playing it. I've seen like 7k people playing on a fucking private server. That's a lot. 
Seven K is a sick. That's more than Garfield cart. <laughs> that's a lot more than Garfield cart. I would actually try to compare uh, how alive um, the game is by comparing it to the team uh, the, the Overwatch numbers on Steam to see if it's about as half good or more popular than fucking Overwatch on Steam. That's a pretty good signifier because anything that's more popular is like a real game. If it's less popular, <laughs> it's not gonna. It's not a real thing. But it's a I got server. myself. So I did get in trouble in League. I don't know if I told you this. Yeah. I got put in the bad boy, like, queue, where what, what like, it takes 15 minutes. Okay, that, that, that only happens if you, like, say literal fucking slurs, a.k.a. the correct <laughs> way to play the game, or you just, like, actually disconnect. What did you fucking do? Okay, so first off, the, they said I had to change my name, so I changed it to Hard R Gamer. Okay, that's off to a good start. <laughs> Two, it may have been because because I was playing Cho'Gath and I called Ezreal what he is, a gay retard. <laughs> so I learned something. So okay. when, I, when I typed in the chat and I put in all chat, I said Ezreal is a big, fat, gay retard. Instead of that, it said hard R gamer has muted himself. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, my God, I've been seeing that message in almost every game of league. It's because someone spurgs out at the keyboard like Overwatch's GGEZ filter. Remember that? <laughs> yes, I know. I, I imagine. Imagine. like oh, OK, fuck, fuck. I hate I hate that video games just like. Oh no, we have to stop these people from being fucking human and interacting with each other. They want to they want to fucking like make you be a fucking rat in a little fucking cage, a little fucking cog with fucking blinders on and a fucking mask on so you don't fucking talk. I want to point something out. Statistically speaking, in the 2000s, aka when peak like uh, the golden age of media was around, the suicide rates of people were at a rock bottom. And I'm just saying, we were selling in fucking n words left and fucking right on Call of Duty. All right. <laughs> I'm, the point is, is that if you live in this really fucking controlled, uh, padded environment, the minute you actually do hear hard R gaming, you're gonna fucking collapse into a pile of city putty. You need to hear the hard R. You need to be called a love for all races. <laughs> maybe every now and then on Team Fortress 2. Because if you're not, well then, you're going to turn into a left That's toy. just a quote from the game. He's allowed to say that. It's for yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. historical that, that, purposes. That, that, that's uh, one of the loading screen tips in Team Fortress 2. You need to... You... <laughs> <laughs> Remember to, to call your teammates the 500 tooth dinosaur. <laughs> or else, they'll, or else uh, uh, they'll turn into Uncle Dane. You can't be such a fucking little wimp. I want to beat your ass. I want to beat you up. I want to kick... Tad, there was a Canadian study that said uh, bullies were actually right about you. Did you know that? Uh, Canadian healthcare also is just like, oh, are you really sick? You should probably kill yourself about it. So I don't really take anything they debate say. Debate them. Debate the Canadians right now. Debate them. Debate them. Debate them. Debate them. <laughs> debate them. I think it'd be pretty easy to say, hey, part Tad, of the healthcare's Tad. job is to not kill you. But Tad. <laughs> debate that. What if if I say debate him more than you, that means you have to debate him instead. I'm just saying, Tad, if I saw <laughs> someone walk sees, up no to takes me, back. if I saw some crippled lady roll up to me in a wheelchair, and she said, hey, can I get one of those, uh, one of those like escalator chair things for the staircases? The, if I can get one <laughs> what of those. What are you going to spit in her fucking mouth? Like, sorry, no, cripple. And no, push no. over her wheelchair. No. If she walked up to me and asked me that question, I would just say, oh, we can't really afford that right now, but uh, you can always try maid. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, maid. Medical assisted in dying. But the, the story was is a, a lady in a wheelchair walked up to, oh, rolled up, I should say, up to the fucking counter at like a fucking uh, hospital and asked her that question and was told to kill her. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the receptionist went back to playing Counter Strike Go. <laughs> yes, but like, like, like that happened. But like, I just fucked it. I, I have a broken record. I talked about this before, like with, with video games years ago. Triple A games, cross triple A games right now. Man, that dog is going crazy over there. He's agreeing with you. Yeah, he, yeah, he's pop off, Jakeru. I, I despise what they've become. Indie games are pretty good right now, at least. And what's also really good is the sudden, uh, the side things going on with video games is that. Old games are really easy to get for free. Not that I would ever advocate piracy. <laughs> I would advocate for piracy. <laughs> yeah, the let me tell you about stance is never to advocate for piracy. By the way, if you check in the description, there's a spreadshirt.com store in which you could buy a t-shirt that has a link to coolrobs.com slash n64 slash free robs slash full dot zip. So, <laughs> so 
I want to retract the statement I said a few episodes ago, but I was talking about the Wii U homebrew, because I feel like an idiot now. So, <laughs> several episodes ago, like almost a year ago, I mentioned that the Wii U is actually a pretty decent homebrew because it has both the Wii U, Wii, and GameCube games all put into it because of uh, extra homebrew features to, to run GameCube discs on, on the Wii U. And you can run GameCube games off their ISO files in the Wii U itself. You go into the V Wii, which is the little mini Wii. Yeah, you, know, you go like the little Wii, Wii, Wii yeah, menu, yeah. like on there. That's the V Wii. It's not a Wii. <laughs> it is the V Wii. Why am I saying it like that? Because they are two different systems like, spec wise, and they have different interactions with Homebrew. So, in order to get a GameCube game to run off of an ISO file, in case you don't own it, not that I would ever advocate piracy, ha ha. Uh, <laughs> CoolRomsGames.com. Um, you will need to go into the VWii, homebrew the VWii in the homebrewed Wii U, which is really easy to do, luckily. Then you have to start installing homebrew apps into the VWii to then run a thing called Nintendon't to, to run the ISO files, which you have put in the into your SD card, which you have renamed as game.iso in a folder for, the, for like, say, Super Mario Sunshine to then get it to work. But to install that, you need to install the WAD manager, the WAD, aka <laughs> WAD manager. The WAD manager was a really interesting thing where you again, you're doing this in the VWE thing, right? So I have my little, I have my little Wiimote to use it, but it wasn't working. I was very confused. So I watched this little video to troubleshoot it, and the VWE's WAD manager doesn't work with a Wii Motion Plus Wii Mote because it was created in like this fucking like russian refrigerator where it just cannot handle the, the difference in like code or whatever so i needed to buy like an original wii mode off of not ebay but of some other fucking website that's for, for selling fucking junk and shit to then get over to me and then when i was doing all of this bullshit my friend who was helping me homebrew just said oh yeah by the way alex i have one more warning for you even though nintendo does work Unfortunately, there could still be an issue with your ISOs, and the save file can still corrupt. And I just said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm just going to go buy a Wii. I was so <laughs> sick. I'm like, I had to go through so many steps to get a GameCube game to work on the Wii U that I just gave up on it. Fuck it. It's not worth the fucking effort. Really, the only advantage is that you don't have to get an HDMI converter. <laughs> yeah, it. pretty much. It's like, eh. Make sure when you're also getting your Wiis, uh, you're getting a Wii that has uh, the GameCube controller ports, memory card slots, you get one of the old ones. Because if you get like a Wii Mini, well, duh, you can't play a GameCube game on that now, could you? <laughs> but um, I remember the, the Wii Mini, there's an exploit where you could uh, put in the same code on like the Club Nintendo and you would get a million points and I bought like a, all of the free shit I could get off there. And then they banned my account. <laughs> Remember going to GameStop, Alex, when we were in like high school and just opening all the cart, like opening all the game cases and taking the Club Nintendo codes out. So we uh, probably yeah. weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, but they didn't fucking stop us. They didn't give a shit because had the people who work at those game retail stores. So I actually give a shit about video games. But I have one more final thing that I think is interesting. So Twilight Menu, because I, I, I love this technical shit now that I'm actually learning about it rather than just being a retard, because as much as Tad yeah, knows how yeah. so much of a tech retard I am, is, um <laughs> okay, so Game Boy Advance games can't run an MGBA because they'll, they'll stutter and slow and the sound will get all fucked up and blah. Don't use MGBA. What you use is an injector. You go to the Nintendo, like, super ultimate injector to then get the ROM, put it in the injector, then you can turn it into a CIA file, put that into your SD card, put it into your 3DS, boot up, you know, uh, FBI, and install the game, and then bam, it is now a Game Boy Advance title on your 3DS app screens that work like the official, in air quotes, um, virtual console. Because the official virtual console for 3DS Game Boy Advance games are actually not virtual consoles, so they don't have save states or any of that other, like, bullshit that the other systems have. Instead, oh, yeah. Instead... Because they did that for the ambassador program or whatever if you bought the 3ds before the price went down you got like a bunch of game boy advance games yes but the reason that, that was so touchy is because those games were never actually a virtual console that was just branding what it's actually doing is it's booting itself up into game boy advance mode but now that twilight menu is updated like 20 times since i last talked about this it actually runs game boy advance games without fucking crashing now off of gb runner gba runner 2 GBA Runner 2 is a lot like the built-in Game Boy Advance that's already in the, in the 3DS. Same with the, the mm -hmm. official Nintendo console. However, they tried to change it around a little bit so it could still do save safe and you can like swap games so that happened to close the whole app. 
that is really cool. Don't ever touch those buttons. Whatever they <laughs> fucking do. I want to test it out saying like, oh, it actually works now. So I downloaded a big giant ROM pack from, <laughs> from Internet Archive of fucking like 400 Game Boy Advance games and just shoved them right up in my 3DS. Except for like I deleted some like Barbie's Big Fuck Adventure and Mary Kate and Ashley's Big Day Out. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to play that game, chat. I tried the swap game feature, and I noticed there was a screen tear thing at the bottom of, like, the screen. I'm like, huh, that's weird. I tried to, like, just hit the reboot button for the uh, game, not the, not the system, right? The screen tear gets another screen tear, so it's, like, creeping up Uh-oh. the screen. I'm like, okay, that doesn't look good. Let's try a different... Maybe, maybe you know, uh, Spyro Orange is just buggy on this. Let's try, uh, let's try this random GoldenEye game, and, like, half the screen gets covered up in these weird screen <laughs> warbles. I'm like, okay, I was seeking suspicion. GBA Runner 2 does not actually like having any of its emulator features actually being used. What I've, what I've come to uh, James conclude. Bond is going to jump out for the bottom screen and get you. He's gonna bond your burger, Alex. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up 007's big fuck adventure, but it'll be all like hyper realistic and blood eyes. It's so scary, you guys. <laughs> but like, Did you know Sonic.exe, that old ass creepypasta, is a thing that like all these little iPad kids know about. Yeah, it, Did you hear about this? Yeah, it's never died because it was uh, it was in a Friday Night Funkin' uh, mod, so kids got uh, know what it is now. Sonic.exe and Jeff the Killer will never die. I think that's really <laughs> funny. There's objectively better stories out there, but these two dog shit ones are just still around. Thinking about when the bullies jump the fence and start opening fire on the kids' birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> And Jeff the killer, <laughs> when, he, when, when he sets Jeff on fire and pushes him down the fucking stairs and the parents just don't fucking react. <laughs> hold just, on, hold on, I'm sorry. Just... <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Well, have you not read Jeff the Killer? No. Oh my I, god, Jeff dude. the Killer is like the thing where it's like the, the spooky like dog face or whatever, right? Yeah, no, there's, a, there's a whole story about it. There's a whole creepypasta about that image. Did you not know that? I did not. I did oh not know God. that there was All a right, whole so story fun. with it. All right, so side note. If you want to make a good Game Boy Advance game, inject it. And everything else, like Barbie's Big Fuck Adventure, just put in Twilight Menu until it gets passionate it fully works. Anyway, back to Jeff the Killer here. Okay, so let me explain Jeff the <laughs> fucking Killer. Tell me the killer. story. But, okay. but set the mood, Alex. Okay, okay, hold on. I'm going to take a sip of water. My oiter. Jeff the Killer. I've never heard of him. Who? What is he? It sounds like he does something bad, Alex. <laughs> All right, chat. 45 minutes in. We're going to talk about video games. And I'm going to try to recite Jeff the Killer from memory. Okay. So, Jeff the Killer is a very, very old, like, 2004-ass creepypasta that was accompanied with that image. We have no idea what the image is from. That's part of why it's, like, the mystery. We don't know what it is. That husky image? Nope, that was fake. That chick on MySpace? That was also fake. We do not know the original image still. That's why it's such, like, a, a, like a meme. But anyway, the actual story is about a young boy named Jeff and his little, and his, uh, little brother moving into town. And they go to this, like, the really nice, high-class neighborhood. And he's like, uh, go to school, meet new friends. And Jeff's like a little distant, little like angsty edgelord, right? You know, one of those, one okay. of those misunderstood little like goth kids, right? And his brother's trying to be like a happy, good lucky guy. He loves his brother, blah, blah, blah. Some bullies approach him and they're like, hey, kid. The bully is described as being like this like 12 year old boy. Jeff's like 11, by the way. He's like this 12 year old <laughs> boy with a skinny, like ginger haired dweeb on his right and a fat, pudgy retard on his left. Where did that way exactly? And so. Okay, so it's just, <laughs> it's the future of podcasting approaches him. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. A 2018 hits him hard. So. They're like, hey, here's how it works here, kid. And they come up on skateboards, I should say. They, 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 they jump <laughs> over him. They, they, they do like that. It's like a movie. <laughs> and so they, they, they go over like, hey, kid, give us your fucking money. And he's like, fuck you, faggot. And then they fuck, because, you know, it's the 2004 story. And then they get into a big fight, and Jeff pulls a fucking knife on the bully and, like, fucking cuts him, right? So then he runs off crying, tells his parents, and, like, the cops come to... <laughs> to uh jeff and his brother's house and like to jeff the killer's house to find out what happened yeah because the kid got fucking cut with a fucking knife in like broad daylight and so jeff was like i had to fucking do it he was gonna fucking kick our ass and the cops just like damn that sucks kid i'm gonna send your ass to juvie for like a whole fucking year (laughs) <laughs> and, and so and so his little brother is like no jeff didn't do it 
I did it. And Jeff's mom just says, like, oh, dude, I fucking knew you'd fucking do it, you little psychopath. Take my fucking youngest <laughs> son away. I don't want to fucking look at him. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And so the cat just go like, well, sounds good enough for me. And they just grab the little brother and like take him away to Juvie. <laughs> nothing so, to look into there. Nothing to look into there. Does the little brother ever get a name or is his name also Jeff Duck Hiller? It's, it's, it's like Timmy or Johnny. Remember, I'm going to completely off of memory of this story I read like 10 years ago. All right? It's actually Tiff the Killer. So after Jeff's after Jeff the Jeff the Nine Killer, uh, his brother gets taken away. He gets really like twice as like mopey and angsty, right? And so now it's like Billy. I remember Billy's name for some reason. It's <laughs> it's, it's when his Discord account gets banned. Okay, I'm starting to understand why you why you identify with this Jeffrey fellow. Yeah, and so then. Billy, this neighbor kid who's like eight, has like a birthday party, and I'm like Jeff, we gotta go to this party. It's really, uh, it's really important for us. It's like why Jeff's like, eh, why the fuck do we go to this fucking faggot party? I want to fucking do that. It's so fucking gay. Eh. And his mom is like, listen here, you little fucking shit. We gotta go to this fucking party. It's really important for us to mingle. Go fuck around in the backyard with the other kids or some shit. Make sure you dress really, 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 really nice. And then, like, it puts this really big emphasis on, like, the parents dressing like, overly nice for this kid's birthday party. And then they go to the party and, like, all the adults there are in, like, these fancy-ass, like, high-class clothes for, like, no reason. And this is, like... For an eight year old's birthday party yeah it's, it's like it's worded in the way that's supposed to be kind of like a weird mystery but it's never brought up again so it's just like this <laughs> it's, just, it's just like this this weird tangent about how well dressed they are for like a whole page and then just moves on like nothing ever happened so jeff goes to the kid's birthday party and the scene happens where i'm talking like he's just in there but he's like hey you want to play and jeff says some angsty shit like we can play like cops and robber i'll be the robber he's like, he's like like over exaggerated like bang like banging with like a finger gun at him and have you ever watched strangers with candy on comedy central I have not. Okay, well, did they this, reenact Jeff the Killer? I no, but they, there's this bit with Stephen Colbert, who is like a gay guy with his this teacher, who I'm not gonna describe this visual joke to you, where <laughs> to, to, he's having a secret gay affair with this teacher who's already married, and he's like, "Hey, we're gonna go on that uh, that big old bang hunting trip," you know what I mean? And every time he says that, he points like his spear guns to the wife and is doing like little, little guns, but, bang. <laughs> <laughs> he does this like, well, you know what they say, we gotta go to that. He pulls it like, he did these like two like, like imaginary revolvers. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> pulls out a shotgun. <laughs> bang, 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 reloads it. Bang, hunting trip. <laughs> it's just, I imagine Jeff was doing that to the fucking kid. And then the fucking bullies show back up. They skateboard over the fence in like a cool action <laughs> shot. They slide and say, like, hey, Jeff, time for some fucking payback, yo. Give, me, like, your, give, me, give me this random child's birthday cake. And like, listen, listen, you little fat queer. You already got my brother sent to fucking juvie, all right? I think that makes us even. And the kid says some, is something that's admittedly kind of hard, where he's like, yeah, you play to get even. I play to win. And he punches <laughs> Jeff right in the fucking face. And so then they get into this big fucking fight and they're just like just they're just throwing each other through like tables and shit in the backyard. <laughs> and the the, the cloud just... <laughs> jumps out of the cake. Get out of the way to dodge this fat this quote fat gay retard. So so they start just just, just uh, 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 he's like grabbing his bash his head into the fucking concrete. It's just like this really over the top action scene of these like twelve year olds fighting in the backyard <laughs> at this birthday party. <laughs> So, I like to imagine this is what they think they're doing, but in reality, they're like the, the fucking spin kicks from Street Fighter and missing each other. So you say that, but what happens is that the fat kid picks up Jeff and fucking tackles him through the fucking backyard like screen door window into the fucking living room. And so just <laughs> crashes through while the like the adults are just sitting there sh sipping champagne. They have no comment on this. So I imagine they're just going, huh, boys will be boys. <laughs> so they go to the kitchen and he like bashes his fucking head. He like bashes Jeff's head over like the countertop. Jeff like grabs a wine bottle and smashes it over his head, tries to fucking cut him with the broken bottle. <laughs> and they're just having this, <laughs> this over-the-top fight. 
he like beats up the other two bullies. He like knocks it out. He like grabs one and like breaks his fucking arm, Mortal Kombat style. <laughs> <laughs> and he fucking, and he, fucking he, like, he like pushes the, like the fat one over and he just like falls over like it's like he hits his head hard and like dies or some shit and so then he's going <laughs> so they start fighting upstairs and they're just going <laughs> up the stairs just beating each other up family guy fucking style they get into the fucking bathroom he like grabs the fucking like towel rack like the metal bar and starts just going wham, 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 just beating this shit out of the fucking bully only for the bully to grab it out of his head you're going arr, 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 and start beating the shit out of him with it. <laughs> That's a Looney Tunes <laughs> bit. Yeah, and so he like he he like action hero drop kicks fucking Jeff the Killer against the wall, which knocks a can of bleach on like this top shelf in the bathroom for some reason, all over Jeff, all over Jeff. He's like, ah, fuck, I'm covered in bleach. Oh my god, that's why his face is white. No, because the bully says, hey Jeff, looks like someone's about to get fucking owned, and he pulls out a lighter and throws the lighter at Jeff while he's covered in bleach, which sets him on fucking fire. <laughs> and Jeff goes, <laughs> Jeff goes, oh, fuck, I'm on fire. Grabs the kid and, like, tackles him down, and they roll down the fucking stairs, which is, like, knocks out the bully kid or some shit. And Jeff's just <laughs> on the ground screaming in pain, ah, oh, fuck, I'm on fucking fire, ah. And, like, the adults <laughs> finally notice that the boys are just being boys, setting each other on fire. And they, they, like, put Jeff out and take him to the fucking hospital. And he's there for, like, months. Like, his skin is being, like, repaired or whatever from, like, the burns, right? So, after all of this, uh, the cops notice that, well, you know what? I guess those bullies bringing literal guns to their birthday party and opening fire on a bunch of eight-year-olds. Maybe they were the bad guys. And they let... Wait, you forgot that part. I forgot the guns. guns. Oh, my God. I forgot that, yeah. They, they jump over and they start firing their guns wildly into the <laughs> fucking party. <laughs> oh, I'm going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> They're twelve, by the way. <laughs> but like, but like, anyway, anyway, anyway they, they fight. These blah, are the blah, most blah. badass bullies on the planet. Alex, do you think that they were wearing a helmet on their skateboard? Ted, they, this all started for like five dollars of lunch money. <laughs> 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 this, so, Alex, I'm going to tell you right now that I am more engaged in this story than I am in The Last of Us 2. This is showing that revenge actually bad much better. <laughs> So, so anyway, anyway, so Jeff is in like the hospital and he's going through it, right? He's like completely isolated in this, in, in this environment. And he was like, man, fighting those guys kind of felt good. It kind of felt good just beating the shit out of him with this fucking metal <laughs> rod. <rod. laughs> and so he started, started to go insane. Alex, can I make a prediction? Will the nurse walk away and it realizes that his chart says Jeff and his last name? Duckilla. <laughs> no, no. It's stupider than that, trust me. So, so that child's name? Albert Einstein. So his brother is let out of juvie and they all visit him in the hospital. And apparently his mother was just never visiting during visitation hours, so he's been like completely fucking isolated. Because his mom is <laughs> just like horrible. Father? <laughs> you know, boys will be boys. <laughs> He has a dad. It's mentioned he has a dad. He's just like fucking around somewhere. I mean, he's, he's just busy. He's at the. F- <laughs> TV. He's in the mines. So, so they all come to visit him on the day on the final day where he's gonna get his cast, like his face cast removed. They 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 peel the thing back, and his skin is like bleached white, and his like lips are all like red. He's all like fucked up from the burn scars, right? That is where that image comes from. He just sounds like 90s Michael Jackson. Yes, but that, that that's the, the image. Now Jeff the Killer looks like that. And Jeff is like, well, what the fuck's the problem? He goes to the fucking mirror and sees himself. He's like, oh my god. I'm beautiful. You know, that kind of cringy shit. And so now that now that he's happy with his new face, he does like a weird creepy joker laugh. And his mom is like, damn, this little faggot's gonna go crazy. And so <laughs> and It was so, 2006. <laughs> that's just how we talk to each other. And so one night his mom goes into his room to check on him, and he's got like a knife and he's like cutting his face into a smile, Heath Ledges style. And he's like, Jeff, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, Oh, well, I like how much my smile looked in the mirror so I'm cutting a smile into my face so I could always look at my smile haha and he's like that's nice boys will and be boys she's like that's nice Jeff immediately 180s to her husband honey get the gun we gotta kill our son <laughs> so 
<laughs> so then you know what? Point. Say this about his mom. She fucking she gets it done. So, oh, my little kid is annoying. <laughs> fucking send him to boy prison. <laughs> So my other son's too white now. Get rid of him. And so, so Jeff overhears this for some reason. He's like, "Mommy, you lied to me." What's he got? I'm he's got fuck fucking super hearing. Why is he saying "mommy" now? Because it's gotta be creepy. It's 2004, Tad. They did they they did the creepy doll <laughs> aesthetic, and also they say "fag" a lot. It's just how it is. Mo- <laughs> mommy, I overheard you calling me a faggot. Time to die. And so he he goes to start shaking the fuck out of his mom and dad and fucking kills them and then um he goes to his, his brother's room his brother wakes up and sees jeff standing over him with a knife he holds like his hands up to his mouth he goes shh go to sleep and then stabs the fuck out of his brother and kills his brother too and so that's the story of jeff the killer he becomes a killer <laughs> because some bullies set him on fire <laughs> at an eight-year-old's <laughs> birthday party <laughs> okay but consider this <laughs> Did he deserve it? <laughs> Based on what the bully said, on their side of the story, he was being a little bit, and I quote, kind of fruity. <laughs> so that's what the kids are into now, huh? They're in that Jeff the Killer, huh? So, so, so Jeff the Killer. Jeff the Killer is like one of the original copy po- uh, creepy pastas out there. It's really, 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 really bad. It's really, 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 really funny. And it's really popular. Did you know there's, like, Jeff the Killer, like, uh, fan fictions where he, like, it's romantically... Oh, my God, there's a story I remember reading. Uh, By reading, I mean some fucking shit. There's no women in this story besides his own mother. Yes, yes, but there's a story where it's, like, a retelling of Jeff the Killer. I remember this chick reading it because it was sold as, like, a book where this uh, chick goes to, like, a summer camp with Jeff before he becomes the killer. (laughs) And it's like a re it's like a reimagining of his backstory where he becomes the killer, like at the fucking like summer camp and is like killing people to like protect her and shit and like this weird like serial killer stalker BF way. Cause you know, chicks you know, teenage girls fucking love that shit apparently. So like there's like this whole fucking like subgenre of like fucking creepypasta like romance fictions of Jeff the fucking killer. It's fucking Children's awesome. Children's horror romantic fan fiction yes i am dead serious now ted listen let me tell listen, you, you oh, need to, listen if you're listening right now you need to check your like your baby cousin's ipad history ted tell me you know about the skin taker right the guy on tv I, the funny skeleton with the, the cloak made of human skin I do not know him. I do not know about the skin taker. <laughs> okay, so this one isn't nearly as funny. It's just like, I'm just shocked you didn't hear about him. Okay, so this one's really short. This is like a short story. It's a uh, old creepypasta of essentially like, um, late night, um, fucking, what was what I'm looking for? Public access TV of like a haunted public access TV channel. I actually don't remember the entire story, so I'm not going to try to pretend I do. I just remember like the the, end, the whole bit is just like, it is effectively these, a bunch of these kids all collectively watching TV. And it's basically public access goosebumps, but imagine if it was real. And it's like effectively what they're fucking watching. And it all ends <laughs> oh with like the host. And it all ends with like the host of the show is this little like, puppeteered skeleton man who has like a cloak made out of like human faces called the skin taker and this was actually turned into like a like a bit on like sci-fi tv you know peak fucking fiction right fucking there and fans were mad that the bone guy the skeleton was called like mr bones as opposed to the skin taker to which the the creator of the show said the skin taker is so fucking stupid and on the fucking nose no i'm not calling him the fucking skin taker if you send me this letter again, I will take your skin. I will take your skin, yeah. But, like, fuck, dude. I, I, I actually shy. I thought you of all people would know random bullshit about random creepy pastas and, like, how they have influenced, like, media. Obviously, we all know how, like, Slenderman's influenced things, but, like, Jeff, Sonic, what's, the Skin um, Taker. What's Slenderman? Slenderman? Slenderman's done, like, everything. Yeah. What are you talking what's, about? What's Slenderman? I haven't heard of that one. Oh, you know, it's the one where those two chicks fucking shanked their friend in the middle of the fucking woods because they read some creepypasta slash fan fiction where they can go have sex with this tentacle fucking alien man in the woods. <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to remember the, 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 the fucked up creepypastas I read as a kid. I remember I read I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. What? That's, that's a probably book, a little too Ted. Fucking, 
Yeah, is that a yeah. creepy pasta? Alex, once again, yeah, you know, I got really into peak fiction. My name's Alex. I watched a, yeah, I watched Beast Wars. <laughs> And meanwhile, I'm watching, like, fucking Twin Peaks for the third time in a row. By the way, Beast Wars is peak fiction, by the way. Really good show, just saying. I thought it was going to be bad, because it's like it's the second computer-generated show ever made. But no, it's what actually... What was the first? Was the first Donkey Kong season two? No, it was Reboot. That looked like shit. Reboot was the first uh, CGI show ever made. Uh, Beast Wars was the second, and like Beast Wars looks like the second, but I will I will do a side tangent <laughs> about Beast Wars. You get used to the animation basically like by episode two, and then you just start enjoying it like unironically. Beast Wars is just like a really well written show, and it's well voice acted, so it carries a lot of the weight. Dinobot's the best character, by the way. Before anyone asks, <laughs> Alex, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say this one more time, then I'll drop it. But the whole time you were describing that, I was thinking that SpongeBob meme where they're on like the roller coaster and they got the itty bitty little hill. No, it's good, it's good. It's legitimately <laughs> it's really good. I will make you watch Beast Wars. You will legitimately like it. It is actually just a it is a competently made fucking slop show, alright? It's good tasting slop. It's got the nice spices to it. <laughs> Listen, we love slop here. We, we love, love slop. Slop here. You know like what Jeff else I really love, Alex? Killer. What's up? <laughs> okay, so I've gone on an adventure over the past few months. This is the new saga in the Tad versus. I call this, you'll never guess what this is about. I call this Weed Tad. Oh, God. <laughs> so, at the start of this journey, it's like 11 o'clock at night, right? And I stop at the second sketchiest gas station chain, BP. The sketchiest, obviously, being Shell. You've never been inside of a Shell that didn't make you uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so I go on the BP, and I'm just browsing, and I'm, like, looking at the knockoff Funko Pop Sonic the Hedgehogs that they have dangling off, like, the little the, the cigarette thing. All right. And the Indian guy behind the counter motions for me to come over. All right? And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. It's 11 o'clock. Let's go see what this strange man wants. So he opens up, like, the glass display, which, now that I think about it, I don't know if this is common in anywhere else. So in Illinois, at, like, BP and all these other shitty gas stations, they just have, like, glass displays with, like, Spongebob weed pipes, like, Rick and Morty bongs, and, like, <laughs> purple dragons. Is I... that, like, a thing that you've ever seen anywhere else? Now, I'm just now realizing that this may not be, like, a known... <laughs> A known thing across the U.S. Are you sure this was a real gas station, Ted? And this was like a fucking front. This wasn't a uh, a fucking mafia front, an Indian mafia front. Well, remember, Alex, I'm still in my hero's journey, right? <laughs> okay. I rejected the call to adventure earlier with the filthy notepad at the comic shop. So this must be like the next step, the <laughs> supernatural aid slash elders guidance. Okay. And this isn't a bit that is what I was thinking. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm doing this now. <laughs> so I go over and he tells me $15, sir. I go, okay. I give my spirit guide a $20 bill. He gives me $5 and a quote, very nice, sir. Pokeball shaped weed grinder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also when I was there, I almost forgot about this. I bought an incense stick that was flavored as black women. <laughs> <laughs> so again tell me chat is this real tell me if i just sound like i'm fucking insane or if anyone else has sketchy ass gas stations like this i'm in a town of like less than ten thousand people so <laughs> i'm just saying it seems a little weird so alex this started my adventure i'm like okay Let's look at, I've never been, there's like a million smoke shops around here. I'm like, I want to go see what's in there. And I've discovered there's like a sliding scale, like at the lower end of the scale where you can buy a $15 Pokeball grinder that fucking breaks the second time you use the cocksucker. Very nice quality, by the way. <laughs> uh, so gas stations at the end and then middle is like anything with a pun. Like if it calls itself high times or smokestack. And then at the higher end, any store that sounds like a phone app. <laughs> so what, like, like fucking Weed Inc.? Well, the one I went to was called Stash with an exclamation point. All right. So, was it any good? So none of these smoke shops actually sell weed. Like it is legal in Illinois, but they don't sell weed except for Stash. But they do all sell hemp 
sprayed with Delta 8 distillate and fake magic mushroom chocolate. Do you know what Delta 8 is? Not in the fucking slightest. Oh, also they sell CO2 cartridges, so you could just inhale them and do whippets like a 13-year-old. Oh, cool, awesome. You can do, what you can do whippets like Jeff the Killer's bullies. <laughs> <laughs> or like the guy. So I work as a security guard, right? And there was a video going around on Twitter of a guy in the same security guard uniform as me getting high off Lysol air disinfectant and crashing his car. <laughs> I just remembered that. These are my people. He would shop at high time smokestack. <laughs> I'm so happy I don't fucking do drugs. Dude, it's so, they're all so fucking lame. All these people fucking suck. So, oh yeah, so the thing I was saying earlier. So Joe actually told me this. So hemp is just like it's it's just it's just used it to make like rope and shit. It's just plant material. It's plant fibers. Yeah. What they do is at the factory, they'll just spray it down with Delta Eight. Delta Eight is legal, and you could probably buy it in Idaho because it's one molecule away from weed. <laughs> okay. It's like very slightly different. All and right. if it gets outlawed, they just change it to Delta Nine. So now it's two molecules away. Oh my god. <laughs> oh oh. Okay so. That was at the like the sketchy ass one, right? But I didn't leave that the sketchy one empty handed, Alex. You will never in a million years guess what I bought at the fake weed store. Was it a crack pipe that had popular pop star sensation Hatsune Miku? No, but they did have a uh, Hatsune Miku rolling thing. Like oh. it's like a big tray. God. It's just, and they did have it there, but it was fifteen dollars, and I was like, "Fuck that!" Instead, they had a noticeably obese Homer Simpson with a Supreme logo right on his eyes ashtray for eight dollars. I did buy that. Okay. You would think like noticeably obese Homer Simpson. What does that mean? Like Homer's a big guy. This was like, you know, at first I thought it was Bart from that thing where he's like he washes himself with a rag on a stick, but it yeah. wasn't. It was like some. I'm fairly certain that it's like fetish art because it's not official. And I guarantee you they just grabbed it from somewhere. They just grabbed some Google images and just sell it for $8. So other stuff they had there. They had just random clothing in decidedly not Midwest America sizes. They range from like extra small to medium. Like, that was suspiciously small. Like, the mannequins they were using were for, like, 12-year-old girls. Okay, that's a, off to a really not good start. And I think I sent you a photo of this. There was a shirt I was very tempted to buy that said, Black by popular demand, me. <laughs> but Kirsten, Kirsten <laughs> talked me down from it, which is probably the smarter role. <laughs> I want you to know, Alex, if I did buy that shirt, I would show up to like the first live. Let me tell you about wearing the black by popular demand shirt. I'll, I'll bring my uh, a black woman is speaking. Uh, listen, learn mug. that You bought me for fucking Christmas. I also bought a Hello Kitty and a hot air balloon grinder, which is funny because she's high, right? The, the the cashier explained that to me and made sure that I understood it was funny because of that. The image is like, like it must have been like a square image that they just scrunched down. It's like all skewed and it looks like shit. Okay, so because I don't actually do drugs, I had to very quickly look up what a weed grinder looked like and I'm getting like 17 different images. What the fuck does this thing look like, Ted? Okay, so I did buy one that wasn't going to put lead in it, right? So what they are, according to what I bought, which is the Tornado uh, Herb Grinder, on the left side, it says not for use with tobacco or any other substances. But on the other side, it says used for herbs and tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can apparently buy a Vivo Sun 2.5 four piece clear top herb grinder, aluminum spice grinder for kitchen at Home Depot. This is the first thing I find <laughs> out when I type in weed grinder. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah what you do is you put it in there and then you put it in the top and then you just like spin it around and it like tears it up and then it falls underneath okay right but you do that with your herbs you do that with your fresh herbs no tobacco okay so i bought one of those from there and then i was like you know what 
Kirsten's over there doing her taxes. I'm going to see if I can grab an energy drink from the back fridge. I go back there, Alex, and okay. I notice, oh, hey, this light is not working back here. I'm in like a dark, scary corner. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm just going to grab my soda and get out of there. I open it, and all of a sudden, something splashes on my foot. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? So a can of, this is 2024, by the way. This was like two weeks ago. A can of Coca-Cola coffee had exploded in that fridge, which means it must have been sitting there since November of last year when they discontinued it. And it had been festering in there and it dripped on me when I opened it, Uh. which means I'm the first person to open that fridge in at least four months. (laughs) So I bought a sip from there, and I, I just I just wiped it off with a napkin, and I was like, that's good enough. What the fuck? Why? I put, okay, whatever, sure, 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 whatever, whatever. Do it. <laughs> so the nicest one I went to was called Stash, right? Like an app. So it was basically like a weed apple store with a fucking bank vault and security guards, dude. I went from the BP to Homer Simpson Supreme to uh, we need to get a copy of her ID. Uh, Thank you. Go ahead and set your bag over there. (laughs) Alex, this was the only fully staffed store I have seen since 2019. Like, think about it. When was the last time you saw more than two employees in a fucking store? There was 10 of them there. (laughs) So this made good money then. So when I went in there, I expected, like, an old hippie guy in coveralls to, like, walk up to me with a mason jar and be like, yeah, man, this shit will get you higher than giraffe pussy, dude. (laughs) Instead, I got a whole army watching my every move and secret hiking bongs. Do you want to learn about the secret hiking bongs, Alex? Yeah. (laughs) So what they are is it's a water bottle. But, like, the straw in the middle, you can drink water out of it, but as the person at the front desk told me, you could actually just hide your weed, and then you drink half of it, and then you smoke weed in the woods when you come back with it, so that the fucking park officer won't rest you. Why do you- I hate weed people. I hate- I hate weed bros. <laughs> oh, dude, I need to get- Dude, it's been at least 30 seconds since I last got high. I gotta get high in the public park, bro. But can't let the park ranger find out. Dude, this fucking- so oh, dude, dude. Dude, look over there. Dude, it's like a fucking deer. Look at that fat kid. He just jumped over that guy's fence. I wonder what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that, that party sounds lit. Uh, so, so, Alex, so the other thing about this place. So, number one, it was really funny because there was a 15% discount if you're a retail worker. Well, I do work at Walmart. The second thing was that you don't just go up there. They don't give you like a restaurant menu. You have to order everything on a tablet like an iPad kid buying Robux. Okay. Because think about it, if you're fucking zoinked out of your gourd, you really can't have a conversation with anyone. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> order your weed on the iPad. And Ugh. it all has, like, stupid fucking names. Uh, actually, hold on a second. Alex, I just had a Jimmy Neutron brain blast. There is a non-zero percent chance there was a Jeff the Killer weed at that store. <laughs> I'm typing it right now. Jeff. Jeff the Killer Weed. Okay, it's Jeff the Killer. You know what? I I don't know what I expected. This just looks like Homestuck characters. <laughs> Jeff the Killer just looks like a Homestuck, Alex. <laughs> hey, he was made before Homestuck, thank you. <laughs> Zach and Jeff smoke weed. 500 subscriber special. 27 minute long video. Motherfuckers will be out here selling shit like Banano, Granddaddy Purple, Chronic, Gelato, OG Kush, GSC, <laughs> Runts, Apple Fritter, Wedding Cake, Purple Kush, and fucking Haze. <laughs> you just went to the website, didn't you? I just googled weed names. <laughs> Me and the boys getting <laughs> the high on that. I, we're sitting here smoking sour diesel. I saw the motherfucking <laughs> Northern Lights. 
<laughs> I did consider buying the secret hiking bong, by the way. It was, like, really funny, but it was, like, $85. Dude, they had something really fucked up there. So, okay. So when I walked in there, it's like, have you seen the inside of an Apple store? Uh, not in a long time. What have you ever been inside of an Apple store? Uh, when my sister needed... You know, it was a long time ago, because I still have my fucking sister. Uh, we needed to, like, buy a new phone. Well, so they're like, they're just like completely blank and soulless, right? They just yes. have like, here's a table with some iPhones that are like locked down. Yes, with locked like down. a shitload of plastic. Yes, locked down so certain people couldn't get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, Alex. Listen, I want to stay on YouTube, okay? We can't. <laughs> I, I like how it took you a second to realize what the fuck I just said. <laughs> we both had the exact same thought. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I'm just saying, out here in my in my nice uh, red state, I don't have to lock down every item that isn't sunscreen at my Walmart. <laughs> You don't have to lock down your weed stores. I mean, I mean, Ted, Ted, you live in a culturally enriched blue city, don't you? <laughs> I do. I All do. Right. I live in Illinois. All right. All right. Just check in. Anyway, continue your story. <laughs> <laughs> I did buy a uh, a blunt and it was like 97% THC. And I'm like, I think this shit will send me back to Weimar, Germany. I don't, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I'm going to smoke myself back to segregation. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that i've been getting into now is uh browsing like very specific subreddits before they get banned okay right? so this just kind of came about just kind of out of necessity right just like the google reviews thing i just did the google reviews because at the place i was working i had access to google maps and like nothing else so i was just bored and i just wanted to laugh at crazy people all right so now what i do is i go to like r slash and i'll just look around and be like what's like a low skill like labor job okay r slash dollar general <laughs> and dude it is never it's never failed me you will always find someone that's bitching about like you know i work so fucking hard you know i'm doing all this you go to their profile what do you see they're also posting on r slash diphenahydramine alex <laughs> do you know what diphenahydramine is uh is it uh hold on checks weed names is it that chronic is it that jack herner is it that that, uh, Jack Herner. Is it that Alpulco Gold? Is it the Blue Dream? Dude, is it that Jack Mehoff? <laughs> is it the White Widow? <laughs> <laughs> so, Diphenahydramine is Benadryl. Okay. So, originally, I was going to do a whole segment on r slash shoplifting memes which is just a bunch of burnout druggies convincing kids to steal from sephora but they all got banned before we got to record <laughs> so r slash dph is a subreddit full of bored teens willingly giving themselves fucking psychosis by overdosing on benadryls for fun oh my god dude <laughs> There's a pinned post that says, this is the diphenhydramine guide featuring dose calculator. And I'm going to give you a couple quotes. These are like, these are quotes, okay? The reports are pretty uniform. You feel like shit, see spiders everywhere, and you shouldn't do it. <laughs> the whole post, by the way, never says like using it. It always says abusing it. <laughs> Quote, diphenhydramine is significantly more dangerous at recreational doses than psychedelics are. It is not a psychedelic. <laughs> Common side effects are, quote, restless leg syndrome, brain damage, okay. tachycardia, <laughs> seizures, serotonin syndrome. Do you know what serotonin syndrome is, Alex? Uh, Google that because it is fucked. Sero uh, heart attacks, stroke. Cardia arrhythmia, psychosis, hallucinogen persisting perception disorder, depression, erectile dysfunction, and death. <laughs> so it's worth it, is what you're telling me. <laughs> but that's not all, Alex. There's also some stats. 
when you take Benadryl, there is a 75, because on the post, he has like, like reported like symptoms, 75% chance you will see spiders in your skin, 51% chance of shadow people, but a 3% chance of seeing angels. <laughs> <laughs> so he has a whole calculator that you could fill out and the best he could get is a 60% chance of spider brain <laughs> but no one using fucking Benadryl has the attention span to read that shit they are blowing their fucking brains up because they think it's cool to get high on Benadryl okay 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 so Remind me, what is Benadryl even for? Like, its actual purpose it's again? For like, it's like for fucking, if you have a flu. It's like for <laughs> if you got congestion. Because I remember when I had to buy Mucinix, I was, I was really sick watching Avatar The Last Airbender for 72 straight hours. Uh, I was I was actually really fucked up and sick. And so I went to the store to buy Mucinix. And I had to fucking check my I was ID. I fucked up and sick, just like Jeff the Killer. Yeah, but like they had to check my ID to buy fucking Mucinex. I'm like, dude, it's fucking Mucinex. And they're like, look, man, you know what kids are into these days. And now that you're telling me this, I un I understand why I have to fucking get ID to buy Mucinex. So, after you told me about weed names, I went to leafly.com to sort all 8,035 strains of weed by the highest rated, and I wanted to give you some of these names because I think they're really, really funny. Okay, lay them on me. <laughs> all right, so the number one top rated weed. That, that's Hold a, on, it's can a, I guess? Sure. Can I guess? Is it Jeff the Killer Weed? No, it is not Jeff the Killer Weed. <laughs> Uh, Alex, control F, Jeff the Killer. I want to see it. Uh, well, this, this, only, this, this only loads up like 10 at a time. There's 447 pages, okay? All right, it's a lot of weed. Well, you better get clicking, boy. But I want to think, the number one is a hybrid type weed with the effect that it makes you focus. It is a five-star rating, and it is called Dead Ops OG. <laughs> <laughs> So they all have random things like this one makes you talkative. This one makes you hungry. This one is uplifting. Bullshit. That's this one. It's, it's this like a fucking RPG consumable list. Get the yes. fuck out of here. You can sort by if they make you energetic, happy, aroused, or sleepy. <laughs> Alex, Alex, sort by aroused. I need to know what the sexy weed is. Well, the top rated sexy weed is called Bubble Bomb. I'll just let you know that one. <laughs> However, I wanted to let you know my favorite, because I already know that there's 447 pages, but I already found my favorite on page one that makes you hungry. It's called Glue Trap. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get on that glue trip shit. I want to get my mouth stuck to the floor and fucking die. Chat, that's great. Glue Can you draw a picture of me dying in a glue trap? <laughs> 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 the, the the best sleepy one is called Bell Ringer because fuck you. <laughs> well, Alex, isn't that you when you're watching the modern Avatar series? <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get it out of your system. <laughs> the shadow spiders are coming, Alex. So, so you got aroused, creative, energetic, euphoric, focused, giggly, happy, which are two different things, apparently. <laughs> Hungry, <laughs> relaxed, sleepy, talkative, tingly, whatever that means, and uplifted. Dude, these new Snow White and the Dwarves remixes. I don't know about this live action one, man. <laughs> By the way, I want to point out that they're but out of... Uh, 8,035 strands, 1,078 make you aroused, apparently. <laughs> Alex, I want you to sort it by aroused and then sort it to lowest rated. <laughs> <laughs> They're just called like the least sexy things you can. Yo, I got that lowest rated sexy weed. It's called grandma shitting. Oh, <laughs> hitting you up with the peanut butter crunch. <laughs> 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 the five star rating aroused, Doctor Doctor. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, ha! Huh, I can't do lowest rated. I have to go to the last page then. All right, last page of arousing. Okay. So the last, the last one is biscotti cookies and. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's an unsexy cookie, yeah, I then guess. Then double trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and then llama kush. Those are the three uh, uh. least sexy weeds. Oh, wait. <laughs> sorry, I forgot. There's one last page. It's, sorry, sorry. The one-star rated arousal cookie, Dog Days. <laughs> but it's spelled... Alex. It's spelled... Hold on. It's spelled D-A-W-G-D-A-Z-E. <laughs> Alex, I want you to know, when you said that slow, you said dog, and I heard a D, I was real worried. <laughs> we smoking that dog dick, the one-star rated weed. <laughs> that's what he was talking about. Oh, my God, that Scooby-Doo dick. You know for a fact the Scooby-Doo dick is in this 8,000 fucking things. <laughs> All right, Alex, well, I got two more stories, okay? Okay. And I, I have a, these probably aren't related to weed, Tad, right? <laughs> Okay. So back in back this summer, summer 23, uh, around my birthday, for my birthday, I bought a vacuum. And then Kirsten got me a hyper-realistic, accurate gamer, like, rug for a child's bedroom. <laughs> like, it's got a bunch of control. It's got the fucking, it's got the fucking Virtual Boy controller on there. And it's, like, actual. It's not, like, this fake bullshit. Okay. So... Anyway, that's what I got for my birthday, and I was super excited. So we're like, hey, all right, hey, we got some stuff. Let's, we made brownies, because we're like badasses, right? We are not. So then I put on uh, Reefer Madness. Do you know about this movie? No, I never heard of it. I don't watch movies. So it's like an educational film from like the 60s showing what it's like to smoke weed, right? Oh, I'm sure it's really good then. It's like a bunch of dudes. You know what it is? It's the fucking parents inside that Jeff the Killer thing. Because they're all sitting there stock straight in suits and ties. Like taking one like very quick puff off of a weed cigarette or a bunt. And then laughing really hard. And then standing there and not doing anything. So what you're saying is they're all hitting around with that hybrid style 3.8 star reading dick cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're on that dick cheese lifestyle. So I thought it was fun, right? And then halfway through the movie, it gets like for the 60s, like a pretty fucking graphic rape scene. Oh, okay. Like, I did not, I did not see that coming. So I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, I don't really want to watch this, but I can't reach the remote. So I close my eyes. I close my eyes, Alex. You know what I see? I see Pepe the Frog fractaling into infinity and I throw up a whole watermelon on my carpet. You're really selling me on uh, smoking that Indica Wonder Woman OG arousal fucking rating weed. On <laughs> fucking <laughs> Were you smoking that blue cripple? <laughs> I was after that, yeah. <laughs> so what I fucked up, Alex, is I was like, oh my god, I feel so sick. So I just went to bed, right? <laughs> and I woke up in the morning. I left my, I went into the living room. And I'm like, oh, there's a whole watermelon on the carpet. You went to bed to so clean it up. <laughs> I was sick. So I was like, okay, I got to clean this up. So I grabbed my brand new vacuum. I just slurp. And then as soon as I suck it up, I'm like, oh, my God, I just destroyed this brand new vacuum. What did I do? <laughs> so I'm like, Kirsten, it's okay. I'm going to return it to Walmart. <laughs> and that would have worked, except Walmart now actually opens the box to check. And I'm like, if they open this, they're going to see it's full of fucking vomit. They're not going to take it back. They're going to see it's filled with all that fucking watermelon and all that big butt is King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I did uh, I did actually save that. I, I say so what I did is I'm like, all right, they're not gonna take this vacuum full of red vomit, like everything was stained, just like at your house when I threw up pizza. Yes, I remember that very vividly. <laughs> so I like I like, took it apart and I put it in the bathtub and I like sloshed it around and then I went to return it to Walmart and those dumbasses took it. <laughs> Someone in China had to fix that broken thing. <laughs> another time and i don't think this is real this isn't related to weed at all okay this is just me literally almost dying so this recently again Not like a couple fake. weeks ago i was setting up uh for D, &D right and i was talking about a local massage parlor that got busted for being a whack shack nice 
It was called Jamaica Me Tan, and <laughs> Michael just offhandedly says, Jamaica Me Crazy. <laughs> and for some reason, I thought that was the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. So I started laughing, and I couldn't stop. And they realized after 30 seconds of me laughing and coughing really hard, they're like, I asked them afterwards, they're like, yeah, after 30 seconds, we thought you might die. So we were saying in the headphones, say ravioli, ravioli, give me the formuoli. <laughs> so I'm like coughing and coughing. I look at Kirsten, and then my body's like, all right, we're not fucking around anymore. And I just, <clears throat> I just throw up whatever. I think it was like apple juice, like the apple juice, like goop or whatever like it was like the viscosity made it so i couldn't like open up my windpipe my brain just went okay fuck this we're done throwing it up so what you're saying is is that you called me a gutlet yet you've thrown up several times in the past three weeks <laughs> Listen, Alex, weed tan's on a whole new level. I'm smoking that Giga Kong versus Godzilla weed. Nah, see, rated I, four star for attractiveness. See, you were smoking that 4.1 star rating weed that makes you giggly. You're smoking Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke him with my fucking car. Boom. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. For me... All right, Ted. I I I have, I offer you two things. All right, so you're in your weed Ted arc, right? Let's say like, go to your house I, and I just arc. have weed, right? You know, rare, rare footage of me getting weed. I have one in my hand called Grandpa's Cookies, and the other called Gummy Bears. What do you pick? Uh, Grandpa's Cookies is a two star rated on the sexiness, so I will <laughs> take the I will take the other one. I forget the name of it already. It's Gummy Bears. I'm a weed man now. <laughs> I need to be smoking weed constantly. Gummy bears make you tingly, and they also apparently contain uh, limoninine. It's like a yellow warning, whatever that means. I'm sure it's good <laughs> for you. <That's> fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alex, I do have one last... I have two stories. Okay. All right. Uh, the first one... I'm just going to... I'm going to give you one. I'm going to save the other one for later, okay? So I had this happen a while ago. I don't think I ever told you this or the podcast this about the time I got caught in a prostitution sting. Okay, yeah, you mentioned this. You you you've been gassing me up on this story. So what the fuck is this? <laughs> okay, so there I am minding my own fucking business. I get a text message from my mom, and I'm like, oh hey, I I, I want to answer this, but I'm not going to do it while driving because I'm responsible. This was a pre weed tad era. So I pull over, I take a left into the residential thing and I just park on like the curb outside someone's house, right? I put my car in park and I just answer the text. I'm like, okay, hey, yeah, you know, I'll be here, yada, yada, yada. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I see in the house right next to me, I see the door open and I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. I see this lady get out of there with like a tote bag and she stares at me and I'm like, Okay, that's kind of weird, whatever. And I just ignore her. I see her get down. She starts walking towards me. And I'm like, no, she's she's just going somewhere. She grabs my door handle. I didn't have it locked. And she fucking opens my door. And she bends over and she's like, hey, man, can I come in? And I'm like, no. <laughs> well, why are you opening my door? What's going on here? And she's like, well, you know, I just can I can I go in your can I go in your car? And I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> Please let go of my door. What's happening? <laughs> and then she like starts to get inside my car. And I'm like, I'm going to change in the drive, ma'am. Please go <laughs> away. And then all of a sudden, like four police cars zoom in with the lights on, like two behind me, two in front of me. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, what the? <laughs> I'm just, like, I just don't stop and drive. I just crawl forward and the police don't stop me. I don't know what's happening here. They're just letting me go, I guess. Mm -hmm. What's happening? And so I, like, pull up to the police officer, dude. I'm like, did I, uh, is there something going on here? And he's like, yeah, just get out of here, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. <sighs> and so I drive away, and then I see them all, like, reverse and go back to their hiding spots. <laughs> Okay, okay, but that's that's bullshit though, and I think you could have actually uh, pressed him on that because if they were effectively, uh, if you said no, she was still trying to get in, and you know, she's obviously a plant, they could have been trying to honey trap you, and you, they could uh, get in trouble for that. You, you could have you could have actually probably sued if they tried pulling some shit on you. 
Well, I wasn't trying to have sex with this strange skeleton woman. Well, yes, yes. But my she point... was also like 60 pounds soaking wet, right? Yeah, but my, my, my point is, though, is that when you saw the cops call, uh, pull up like that, you could have uh, called him out on a, a honeypot and you could have tried to like uh, press charges. Considering that you especially you were literally just minding your own business. I think what they were trying to do is they were trying to like lure her boyfriend in so she could get picked up by him and that would break some kind of like some kind of custody agreement or something like that. Yeah. So that's why I got wrapped up in the probably a prostitution scheme. Yeah. Or they were trying to just uh fucking falsely accuse somebody because they're cops and just try to exert their power and just got you almost got caught in the crossfire. Listen, I'm a security guard. I'm 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 basically more trained than a cop. And let's just say, Alex, when I get one of these uppity truckers who don't understand this 20 minutes of explanation I have to give them, let's just say, um, I hope they enjoy that 14 minute long safety video. <laughs> you give me an ounce of power, Alex, it goes right to my head. It's going to blow up my frontal cortex like I just did 700 milligrams of Benadryl. See... Well, you're over there doing that. I'm getting high on that space dust. I'm over here smoking them powdered donuts. I'm <laughs> over here getting I'm on the pillars of eternity. I'm over here with that good salsa. We got that Willie's Wonder. Uh, <laughs> we. So, uh, um, back to my story. Um, so I went uh, and I ordered Chinese food and I put five dollar tip on the. I app, need to do lady, things, Ted. And then, and then the Chinese lady told me that actually, I'm sorry, she was a Mexican lady, but she was at the Chinese place, and she said actually that five dollars just goes to the tipping place. It doesn't actually go to them. <laughs> and I thought that was bad. Also, Alex, I want you to. Oh, okay, Alex, we're gonna end the episode like this. I want you to scroll up in the chat and open up that fucking fortune cookie I got and tell me what it says. Uh, it says, hold on, I was looking at my pictures of Jesus in space. I go hard. Uh, it is, what was the last time you showered? <laughs> well, chat. Debate him, chat. Woo, this is a fun episode. Um... I do have something to say at the end here. Should I have maybe plugged this at the start of the two and a half hour episode? Maybe. So in the description, I've got a link to the new merch store. I was using represent.com, but all of a sudden that one just like, it just goes to Cameo now. Like when I put in the URL and I try to look at my shirts and see where the $30 they still owed me went, it just goes to Cameo. So I got a new one. And lucky enough, I just chose this one kind of arbitrarily. I didn't know it had this, but it's actually connected to YouTube. So it should be like the YouTube page itself. But otherwise, it's in the description and we got a bunch of new shirt designs and we're running a promo for the month of March. If you go into like the Patreon or the YouTube memberships, right? And you're at like the highest tier. I will just straight up send you a shirt for free. Any of those designs, you choose it and you choose the color and I'll have like a Google Sheets or like a Google Forms or whatever on the Patreon. And I'll be like, fill this out and I will give you a shirt. You don't even have to pay shipping unless you're in like Tuzbeka, like Goober stand and it's like $45, in which case I might be like, hey, man, let's do like half and half or something. But everywhere else, like everywhere, like the civilized world, I will just send you a free shirt. You just have to be some. You don't even have to stay for more than a month. You could just fuck me and just do it <laughs> once and get a shirt for dirt cheap. Like you could just do that. The intent is like, hey, if like a fourth of these people stay on for an extra month, that makes up all the shirt stuff minus the commission fees for making the shirts. But don't worry about that. That's for me to pay. So thanks for listening to the episode. This is very fun. Um, I'm hoping to do some more somewhat accurate histories coming up here. Uh, Disco Elysium, we will probably give it its own fucking episode. Like, that's going to be crazy because it's going to be the first time we've done, like, a retro let me tell you about, about, like, just a video game. Because I don't think the two of us play the same video games ever. 
Yeah, I, I play. I, I was over here playing. I want to hug the gator and fucking Ark Knights and shit on my 3DS like Wario Land on the Virtual Boy. And you're over here <laughs> playing like uh, this RPG about like getting drunk and or high, getting high on that. Uh, quickly tab over, tab over. Getting high <laughs> on that Gorilla Glue Gelato. <laughs> that shit's sticky. <laughs> oh, that's why it's called because it's sticky. Because weed is sticky, Alex. I hate Weed you sti- so much. It's got that sticky. <laughs> Speaking of sticky, I'm going to let the podcast go now. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Good night.